All right, let's move on to right. our next guy. <laughs> All right, our next guy is Mar- Marvin. This is a guy. Marvin Mims, Oklahoma wide receiver, 5'11", 183 pounds, 9-inch hands, 4.38 in the 40. He hit a 1.55 10-yard split. Three cone in 6.9, uh, 129 inch broad jump, 39 and a half inch vertical. Last year at Oklahoma in 13 games, 54 receptions, 1,083 yards, and six touchdowns. A couple of rushing attempts for three yards. Marvin Mims has been a name that's been around in Devi circles for a little while. He has had his kind of ups, his downs, and there was a real kind of down for a while. And just over the past few weeks, I feel like people are starting to talk about him more again. He's starting to rise up boards a little bit more again. Uh, what we're looking at here is we're, we're looking at a true legitimate deep threat. Mm-hmm. Um, he is a player that can stretch a defense. He can get downfield. He can make big plays, uh, speed, quickness, agility. Like that is where he's going to win. The problem that he has similar to a, a lot of guys that we're going to talk about this week and specifically next week is the size concerns. He's not a, a, a big player. He's, he's very slight. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, there's worry about durability, you know, how physical can he be at the next level? Because you know, like it or not, you need to be, uh, be able to be on the field to make plays. Mm-hmm. And a lot of teams need these receivers to block. And at certain sizes, you just can't, block so you're you limit yourself to how often you can be on the field when you're of a certain size and so that's one of the concerns uh for him but when you're talking about yards after the catch speed i mean that's the name of the game uh for marvin mims so he's had these ups and downs I, i worry about some of the things of like his release is just mediocre you're not going to really get much as far as like contested catch stuff. You'll, you'll see it a little bit here and there, but he's not a real my ball type of guy. No, he's no. not. He's not. There's not a big catch radius was, with him. I thought he was okay. I thought his catch radius sucked, but I thought he was okay in the contested. I thought uh, it, I honestly came away impressed with like for it being 183 pounds, like how strong his hands would and how good he was in those contested catches situations. Not like how quickly he secured that football. I, like, I put I him at, away impressed. I put him at six. So very average. So six is an average NFL player. So when you think of an average, average NFL receiver, somewhere between the wide receiver two and three. So pretty average for me. But if you think he's a little bit better than that, I, I'd, I'd love to hear why. Yeah. I, I mean, for me, I actually came away kind of impressed with Marvin Mims. Uh, again, I don't think his quarterback did him any favors whatsoever. I thought his numbers could have been a little bit better if he had a better quarterback. To be honest with you, Caleb Williams was still there, for example. Oh, um, yeah, for sure. You mentioned his speed is really good. I thought, like, his explosive, I mean, 10 foot, 9 inches for being 5'11", that's pretty impressive by itself. His three cone, pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. Fast, good yards after catch, like you said. But his hands, I thought his hands were really good. I thought he, I thought he had really strong hands. Like, you mentioned the contested catch that kind of worried you. Like, I actually came away slightly impressed. I was like, man, for being, you know, five foot eleven, hundred and three pounds, like he gets in there and takes a hit and not afraid to go over the middle. And like he grabs that ball, he's strong, he secures it quickly. Like didn't have any problem, no ball movement, no juggling there. I thought he actually did a really good job okay. uh in his contested catch. I, I, I thought, thought it was mediocre. I thought he was smooth. I thought he made good cuts. Um I thought his burst was okay. I thought he tracked the ball really well. I think burst and speed is definitely his thing. I'm not sure he's ever gonna be a guy that if a defender's on top of him or on his shoulders, he's gonna win that matchup. You know what I mean? you do you sometimes downfield especially, there's gonna be a guy jumping up, pulling on you know, pulling on the back of you and mm-hmm. stuff like that. That's stuff kind of, that kind of stuff gets they get away with that a little bit in the NFL. Um, and, and I just don't know if he's going to win in those situations, those particular situations. I, I, I have no issues with his ha- overall hands. I don't. Yeah. I gave him a good score for hands. Yeah. I'm just not, I'm not sold See, on the I thought Washington State, like, There's a couple of catches where like somebody was on him and like hitting him and like he came out, like mm-hmm. he really secured the ball. Well, I, I look at that. I went back and looked at all his past numbers. He got better every single year, which I love to see that too. Like for he, sure. His for numbers sure. got better mm-hmm. every year. And, and I, and I went even back even farther. I mean, this dude has pedigree. He owns this, no, this is impressive because, like, Texas is a football state. Like, mm-hmm. Ohio, Texas, California, Florida. Those are football states. You can throw Pennsylvania in there, too. Pennsylvania, um, Georgia, Alabama, yeah. Yeah, football states. So, he comes away with pedigree. He owns the high school, the Texas high school all-time career receiving yards record with 5,485. He's, like, 80 more than Jackson Smith and Jigba. Dang. Um, as a senior, he set a national record, the na- a national record of all high school kids with 117 catches for 2,629 he, yards and 32 touchdowns. He's fast. I mean, he um, can pull away from people. He's legitimate. At Oklahoma, yeah. set a record his freshman yeah. year. 
with touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Nine. So, like, he's got some pedigree behind him, too. It, and listen, I'm not saying Marvin Mims is, like, yeah. this is, like, he's. I think he's, like, my wide receiver, like, four. I have him ahead of Quentin Johnson. I do. Um, oh, wow. So, you like him quite a bit. I do like him more. Because he's safer to me than Quentin Johnson. Like, I don't know, like, how much of a stud he's going to be. And I won't even use the word stud or adequate he is. But he looks like, to me, that somebody be a really good number two in the NFL and produce. And in the right offense, I'm re- he falls in that mix. I have a I have a group of guys here that are in this bubble. It's like, okay, where are they going? What opportunity are they going to get? Mm-hmm. Right? Like, are they going to go to like, it, say one goes to Dallas? Like, hey, then you have C D Lamb. You got <laughs> you got recent Brandon Cooks. You got Michael Gallup there. Like, okay, where do you fall in the order compared to like somebody where there's a clear path to be the number? It's two funny receiver. you mentioned Brandon Cooks because for a ceiling comp. That was a guy okay. I thought of was a Brandon Cooks. If if everything goes perfect, and I don't project wins. it to. I feel, and then NFL. Speed wins. I think you know Brandon Cooks obviously is more much more refined, and sure. I think he's going to have to work on some things. I I agree with you. The physicality at the line of scrimmage is something he has to he has to improve on because mm. I think if you get your hands on a guy like that, he's not going to go anywhere, and he needs to be able to hand fight a little bit better. And those are things in order to operate in the NFL, you're going to need to do those things. Mm. So that, you know, get the ball in his hands. He can he can legitimately in the open field pull away from people. Mm-hmm. He can track the ball well enough downfield that really that, well. Yeah, that that's a that's a, a really nice well. aspect do, of his do game. Do you think he well. can play on the outside or do you think he's he's limited to the slot? At that size, I mean, I you want to say, you know, naturally at that size he's probably going to be a slot guy, but I mean, he, he Which, played it's he played not a mo- death sentence at all. I mean, no, no, a lot no. of the best players play in the slot, but Sure. I think his strengths are going downfield. So do I. I think he's. I think, I think he's an outside type of guy because he's, he's not probably more of a Z. He's not yeah, going to be like a guy that's running shallow crosses or anything like. I just don't see that as like his his thing mm-hmm. per se. His so. catch radius is small. Yeah, I, I mean, don't know. His route tree is somewhat limited too because it has to do a lot there in Oklahoma. Um, he's not. He's also. Like, he's not over. My big what outside of his size and his catch radius, like my biggest negative on him is like. He's not overly like elusive in the, in open field. Like, he's no. He's, he's looking to beat you in speed with speed. Yeah, he's, just, he's more straight line that's speed. It. So yeah. That, yep. yeah, that was like those couple of negatives actually knocked him down. Like, there's a lot of stuff I like about his game, but there's a lot of things at the same time that bring him back down for me. I was just got overly excited about it because I just really thought he did really good and, with his hand. And that's yeah. why I keep saying that. Like, there are some smaller guys I, I think that did really well, but you look, you I had his contested catch a little higher than Garrett, but I thought he was just in like an average route runner. Yeah, I don't think he. I thought it was average. Separation. I don't think any one of us even talked about his routes, did we? Because he's nah. just like they're okay, <laughs> limited. Well, and okay, yeah. and I think that's a good good way to put it, Rich. And and there's a lot of guys here where there's certain schools that they just they don't ask you to do a lot. You're gonna run more or less. Yeah, five different routes, curls, slants, comebacks. Yeah, yep. there's, and there's a couple guys in this class that all they ran curls, slants, comebacks. Had a limited that's route. College tree. football, <laughs> limited route. Mm-hmm. Tree. It yeah. is definitely and college the go football. route. And I and I wrote he wasn't very precise. I, so I mean the ones that he did run, he wasn't like he wasn't busting off. Uh, you know, route real sharp. You can improve. Yeah, too. absolutely. He, he's young. He's twenty one. Mm-hmm. That I, that was something that I was excited about because there are a lot of guys that are twenty three in this class. 24. Yeah. I came. I just he's one of these players again. I, you know, if, if if you don't, if you're new to listening to the show, like I don't like I watch Ohio State. I watch the big games, but like mm-hmm. I don't study these players until the NFL season's over and then I dive into rookie content. That's what I do. And I watch the film. So like a lot of these guys are all fresh to me. Like I don't have any preconceived notions on them. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I have the Twitter talk. That's about it. And some of these guys are like Quentin Johnson get built up in my head and quit uh, Twitter talk. And then some guys that come away pleasantly surprised. And Marvin Mims is one of those receivers. Again, I'm not trying to build them up, but in the, amongst the class I've watched so far, He's in my top five. He's got something you can't teach. He's got speed, and he's got good enough hands that you know it's not an issue. So if, uh, you know, from there you can build on some things. You can improve on your route running. You right. know what I mean? He's got he, that three cone says he's got good movement skills, mm-hmm. and you see it on on tape. So there's things there to work with with him. Um, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna knock him down my border for any any reasons. You know, any yeah, of these I things like the are kind of kind of tic tacky type of stuff that we're talking about, and. As long as it's not he's your habitual driver of the football, yeah. and, you know what I mean. He, like there, there's a lot to work with. with he, a guy he's like going Rose. to be one, and this is going to fall on a lot of guys, but he's going to be one where his 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 position in the draft is going to change a lot for it's, me. It, I literally end it. I'm excited about uh, huh. the player with a lot of room to grow. I'm excited to see where he gets drafted in the NFL draft class. To really define my overall because if he's dynasty rank, if he's a mid second round guy. Well, I'm I'm very excited. If he's getting taken early in the fourth, I'm much less excited. Much less, excited. you know. So yeah. it's it's gonna it's he's gonna. He's right more. out. He's like a 71 for Garrett and I. We're like 
on point with each other. And right and you say that because the way the NFL is going, people like the NFL is hungry for these receivers. Yeah. And they see how much these guys are getting paid in free agency. So you'll see a lot of these guys. They won't all go in the first, but you're going to see a lot of these guys go in the second, third round where people are looking for that that diamond, right? Mm-hmm. So in the, you're going to see a lot of receivers go in the second and third round. And it's going to get you excited too. But again, this class is very... Interested yeah. to see where you have them after next week. Me too. Right, we when I really compared dive into to Downs the, you know, and Flowers and yeah. Yeah. Downs, Charlie Jones, Flowers, too. Hyatt, like yeah. it's there's a lot of uh, good names to come up for next Skinny week. Skinny well. speed guys. Yeah. yeah. So 